probably the most endearing skill that I really appreciated about Jeremy is his calmness on the water. One of the things about being a great guide is being able to not get overly excited or try to do too much at one time. He was very calculated how the boat moved into the zone, how we presented the bait. We were patient enough to wait until we were in range to make a cast. Uh, his anticipation skills of understanding where the fish were going from one zone on the marsh to the next zone on the marsh was th they could only be that if he was doing this on a daily basis because that's what makes great guides the legends is understanding where the fish are going to be next you always have to treat it like a game of chess you have to know where they're going to be two moves from now so that you can be ready for it. I don't like the speed of their movement. Nice. <laughs> Thank you for the call. Thank you for the call, buddy. Great spy. That's yeah, a great spy. It's awesome patience too. That's something that's not exhibited enough. Yeah, he kind of looked like he saw something on the bottom there and went kind of head down and then all of a sudden there was a little plastic worm sitting there beside him. <laughs> One of the, the things that is fantastic about fishing on the stick, on the push pole, is the fact that we can continue to work the same shoreline and the fish never get the wiser. It's a nice fish. Yeah, it's good Pretty. fish. Woo. The hook was not coming out. These little Ned Rig type baits do such a good job. Look at the size of that thing. I mean, he's heavy. Fishing redfish post cold front, sight fishing in the wintertime, tightens those fish up into schools. And we were able to follow one particular school around for quite some time. And they got a little jumpy after we pulled a fish or two out of them, but we were still able to keep track of them um, by gently push pulling. We're not using troll motors. When we pull a fish out of the group, he would pull backwards out of the zone to let him relax again. And those are those are skills that they're not innate. I mean, you have you have to learn that over time. Uh, most guides would try to pull down, stick down, and stay right there. But he was smart enough to be able to pull off those fish, let them calm down and relax. And then we could go back and do our magic again. All right, today's episode with Captain Jeremy Melhoff, we employed several pieces of equipment that I know you're dying to know about. Well, the most important part of the equation was the scented jerk shads. This is the four inch scented jerk shads in the shiner color. Jeremy really likes the subdued look of this particular color. And even though I like to pick a flashier bait at times, it's, it's really what worked the best. The second bait that we used or utilized the most was the Finesse TRD. And the Finesse TRD uh, color that I prefer was the mud bug color. Very, very sexy little earthy looking color, kind of opaque in color with just enough bronze flake to give it a scaly look. What the fish think it is, I'm not sure. But when it comes to actually catching fish that are tough to feed, this little finesse TRD is the way to go. The delivery system, pretty simple. One of my favorite rods. This is the Coastal Clearwater Rod. This is the SWC. 66M. It's a six and a half foot medium action rod. It has about a 70 30 uh, feel to the flex. It's nice and soft so that I can make a cast with a very small light bait. Now, one of the cool things about this rod setup is I have the 150 HG. This is the Curado DC. It's supposed to not backlash. This is the Shimano. And I didn't experience any troubles with it at all. In fact, I was throwing it as hard as I could and I was getting cast from 75 to 90 feet out of this setup and it worked beautifully all day long. Attached to the 15 pound braid, I have a short section here of 20 pound fluorocarbon. I've connected it with an Alberto knot. 
And the bait itself, you'll notice I did not put a loop knot here. I put actually an improved clinch knot right to the chin locks hook because I wanted to give the bait actually a little less action. Remember, they wanted a nice, smooth, slow, gentle presentation. And that's what worked. The style of fishing that Jeremy and I did on this particular trip is something that I'm really familiar with. It's sight fishing. Uh, the only caveat was the fact that it was wintertime sight fishing. And wintertime sight fishing for a Floridian is much more comfortable than wintertime fishing for a Charlestonian. <laughs> it was cold. I mean, I, was, I kept sh shifting my hands in and out of my pocket, pulling my gloves out, putting my gloves off, making casts and dreading the fact that I was gonna have to put my hands in the water to handle another fish. But overall, the sight fishing is, is something that is similar to those places like Texas and Louisiana, where you have visible fish that you can see and you can present to. And it's a matter of fine tuning the presentation. And we caught a lot of fish. You're going this way? Yeah, 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 hit that, throw deep on them. There you go, good, slow. That should get a bite there, slow. Just twitch it a little bit. Did he eat it, see it? Yeah. I think, <laughs> I, think I got him. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> oh, yeah, I couldn't look tell. At him go. Boy, you're spoiling me, Jeremy. <laughs> you are spoiling me, sir. It's like you guys don't even have little fish in Charleston. They probably all eat at the same restaurants that we eat at. God, these fish are healthy. And the water's cold. You'd think they'd be a little slow, but boy, they're jacked. I feel like I'm grabbing a dang alligator. Look at that. Oh, that sun's shining through the tail, it's pretty. <laughs> that is a gorgeous fish. I mean, he's got a blue paintbrush. It's one of the most beautiful venues, South Carolina, that I've ever fished. The, the golden brown marsh and the green water and the dark purple of the oyster bars out here and the fish are so red with the blue tails. I mean, it's just one of those picturesque places. I mean, God, I am so envious of where you get to make your money, buddy. Well, we appreciate it. And next time we'll turn the temperature up just, yeah, just a, a little, few, 10 you more know. degrees, that would have been all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get this guy back in the water and let's just keep doing this. This is a lot of fun. See how easy this fishing is? It always works out this way. Easy peasy. Got a guide that tells you exactly where to throw. You can't screw this up. You can't even make this up. I'll tell you too, that uh, they were much more approachable there. Like when you cast it they in there. They were happy. Yeah, yeah they, they didn't really bump. bother them. They yeah. kind of just, and then I was like, you're getting the bite. <laughs> You know, fishing with CA, I can't get over just this one moment that we shared. Um, we were heading in, the light was kind of getting low, and I basically asked him, I said, hey, do you, you know, you want to stop and fish one last spot? And he's like, yeah, I mean, if you think we can catch a couple of fish, and I was like, all right. So we stopped and really the stars aligned. I mean, it was great. We like couldn't keep fish off. You know, after the third or fourth fish, he's kind of laughing and he's like, just chuckling, oh yeah, let's just catch one more fish at this last little spot. And you know, he just kept saying that and kind of mumbling to me and I was cracking up. He's like, yeah, you're never gonna be able to catch a fish here again. But uh, it was just funny how it all came together and just his sense of humor, it really like made it for me, you know? Oh, there he is. <laughs> I 
<laughs> nice. What a good fish. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that. It doesn't get much better than that, Jeremy. That is some good stuff.